Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. Tonight, <laughs> you join our broadcast with history already in progress because mere minutes before I walked out here on this stage, Republican Kevin McCarthy was ousted as Speaker of the House. And I'm sure this won't be taken out of context when I say, I love the McCarthy hearings. <laughs> this, it's not really hearings, but you get the idea. You get the idea. This all started just last night, right? When Matt Gates introduced a motion to vacate the speaker's chair, which Gates had threatened to file earlier in the day, and then McCarthy tweeted, bring it on. <laughs> to which Gates replied, just did. Then it continued when McCarthy replied, okay then, and Gates replied, well, okay, to which McCarthy replied, what happens now? To which Gates said, not sure, bro. To which McCarthy replied, I'm not your bro, bro, but I think if I get a simple majority, I survive, prompting Gates to ask, simple majority of total or just those present? To which McCarthy said, simple majority of your mom. And Gates replied, cool comeback, to which McCarthy said, thanks. To which Gates replied, I'm being sarcastic, BT dubs. To which McCarthy replied, I know, dumbass. <laughs> to which Gates responded, whatever, dude, my dad says I have to go eat dinner now. <laughs> so there's a process. So there's a... There's a process. It's chaos. In the end, in the end, McCarthy lost with uh, Matt Gates plus seven of his Republican cronies and all of the Democrats voting to give McCarthy the boot. Seems like strange bedfellows between those two groups. But in a Democratic meeting earlier today, California Representative Adam Schiff quoted the big Lebowski saying, <laughs> Gates isn't wrong, he's just an asshole. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Wow. That's true story. Wow. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. The douche abides. <laughs> you may remember back in Jan just this January, back in January, Congress had to vote a record 15 times for McCarthy to get the Speaker's job. But to remove him, just one. <laughs> That's progress, Kev. I feel good about that. Now, this has never happened before in the 247 years of our republic. So, Kevin, congratulations. You made history. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misread that. You are history. Because... I don't know about that. Yes. Because it's hard to see any politician come back from this kind of unprecedented humiliation. So it's time to say farewell to former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy, seen here pointing to his going away gift. <laughs> Speaking of public humiliation, Donald Trump, today, <laughs> he was in New York for the second day of his fraud trial, and it can't be much fun for him to sit there since the judge already found him to have committed fraud. But his lawyers seem to be having a pretty good time. One of them came to court yesterday with a gaming laptop. She's using her downtime to play Grand Theft Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this trial is overseen by New York City Judge Arthur and Goron, seen here in his audition photo for The Golden Bachelor. <laughs> hey. Yes, you may approach the bench. It does please the court. <laughs> He's already... <laughs> or and Goron fans here tonight. <laughs> He's already issued a scathing ruling against Trump, and it must be hard for the ex-president to sit there and listen to all these people slam his business. Or it would be hard for him to listen if he was listening, but he's not. Instead, today, while he was sitting in court at his own trial, he went on Truth Social where he put up a post attacking Judge and Goron's clerk, who was literally in the courtroom with him, <laughs> calling her Chuck Schumer's girlfriend. He's acting like a bored high schooler. He also passed the note to the judge saying, will you convict me, yes or no? <laughs> We've also seen several official courtroom sketches from this trial, but yesterday, Trump shared one 
that his fans made. There it is. <laughs> he, actually, he actually reposted this. I've heard Jesus is my co-pilot, but from the looks of this, he's also a co-defendant. <laughs> and I'm, oh, I'm being told that this is actually implying that Jesus is his defense attorney, which makes sense. His mom would be so proud. And if you want to retain the services of our Lord and Savior, just check out his new ad. Jesus and Barnes, Messiah and Attorney, 800-555, Lamb of Justice. There you go. You want him in your corner. You want me in your corner. <laughs> Trump isn't just getting slammed with legal issues. He's all getting blasted by some of his senior members of his former administration, like outgoing chairman of the Joint Chiefs and subway rider seeing a mariachi band get on his train car. <laughs> Mark Milley, in his farewell speech recently, Milley implied that Trump is a wannabe dictator. Another high-ranking general not mincing words about Trump is his former chief of staff, an uncle who's shown you the church and is now deciding if you can handle the steeple. <laughs> John Kelly, years ago, The Atlantic published a story which claimed that Trump had no respect for the military or for fallen soldiers. And last night, John Kelly went on the record to confirm several of those disturbing stories, including that Trump thinks prisoners of war are all suckers because there is nothing in it for them, that he did not want to be seen in the presence of military amputees because, quote, it doesn't look good for me, and that he ranted that our heroes who gave their lives in America's defense are losers and wouldn't visit their graves in France. That is despicable for a commander-in-chief to disrespect the hallowed ground of our war dead. What could he possibly do to make up for saying that? I will take electrocution. <laughs> Kelly ended his statement saying, there is nothing more that can be said. God help us. <laughs> True, but unfortunately, God's a little busy right now, sir. <laughs> oh, this is, this is interesting. I enjoyed this. Last night at 1.05 a.m., Donald Trump posted, Now that the strike is over, the talentless, low-rated creeps of late-night television <laughs> are back. Thank you for watching, sir. <laughs> but I'm not surprised. I mean, he's a 77-year-old white guy. Of course he's watching CBS. <laughs> but I do have a question. Low-rated creeps of late night, how did he find out our original podcast title? <laughs> he, was, he wasn't done. 45 minutes later, almost 2 a.m., after he had digested his bed nuggets, he posted, <laughs> Remember when I told you that the poorly rated and not at all funny late night talk shows are nothing less than a major campaign contribution to the radical left Democratic Party, adding, watch what is going on, so interesting. I know you meant that as an insult, but that really sounds like the kind of rave review you want to slap <laughs> on a Times Square billboard. So today, we did that. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Watch what is going on. So interesting, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Sir, thank you for the endorsement. I hope you get a chance to check out the billboard on the way to your next court appearance or Bubba Gump Shrimp appearance. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is John Oliver. If you want me to come back, 